region with that beautiful dance. Dancing by her side is the queen of mother, Pok now. Atibali Azantilo the first. Queen mother, Pok now. Atibali Azantilo the first. Wadaga representing the Upper East region, ladies and gentlemen. Please give it up for Wadaga. Thank you very much. The next contestant is about to hit our stage. Pangaye, so ka so pangala, so ka so pangaye, panga bena yesu ni. My profound thanks goes to God Almighty for his goodness and for his mercies, for his words are yes and amen. To the Upper East Regional House of Chiefs, Pedi Tundini Adiele III, the Queen Mothers, the Members of Parliament, the former Regional Minister, the current one, to my family and friends, Atula BC, students and staff of the University of Ghana, the entire Catholic Church, Sunday School Teachers, Greater House Chapel, Lawyer Clara, King David, to all those who have supported and keep on supporting me, to those that believe in the Ghanaian dream, to those that have held my hand, I say a very big thank you to you. Tonight, I would be unveiling my project. This is something that I am very passionate about. And I pray and hope that you also buy into this idea as it is a prevalent issue that must come to a stop. I can't do this on my own. Come with me, let's walk this route together. I can't let it in, but please keep voting to keep me in the competition, for we are aiming for the top. We never came this far to look back, for God is king and God is great. Wedaga. Kindly vote Wedaga to the short code star 713 star 13 hash or download the TV3 reality app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. They call it not. But we call it home. Akia lady de, mposi a zuzu, mposi a baraka, manya janta na go de. Waidaga is clothed by Rider One Couture, with hair by Best and More Limited. Ladies well groomed by African American Beauty Academy, inspiring beauty beyond borders. Accessories by Magdal Couture. <laughs> But the napkin gave me sweat. I'm stained. You, you are what? Stained. Oh, no, 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 no. Take this rubber and go and use. Baba. Go and use the rubber. Hurry up, hurry up. My stepmother abuses me sexually. And I cannot cry. I cannot cry because society says it's not in a man's place to cry. I can't even focus in school. Kai, 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 kai. For raping this young girl. You are fine. 10,000 cows and 10,000 Ghana cities. Chuba! <laughs> In 2013, I lost a friend to unsafe abortion. <laughs> Though I am a victim of teenage pregnancy today. <laughs> I have vowed not to toll that path. These are situations that we are faced with in our homes, schools, churches, mosques, communities, and even in this auditorium. Rick Warren once said, willpower can produce change, but leaves us with an internal stress because the root cause has not been tackled. In order to curb this menace, sufficient information in relation to reproductive health education must be provided. And this is the project I intend to embark on. Reproductive health education simply means providing adolescents the requisite information in relation to their reproductive organs 
abstinence, menstruation, teenage pregnancy, helping victims of sexual abuse and victims of teenage pregnancy, contraceptives, and sexually transmitted diseases. According to the Chieftaincy Act of 2008, chiefs are given the legal rights to settle disputes. According to statistics of the Ghana Health Service, about 500,000 teenage pregnancies were recorded between the period of 2016 to 2020, of which about 100,000 teenage pregnancies were recorded only in the year 2020, which means about 130 teenage pregnancies were recorded daily and about 13 teenage pregnancies were recorded per hour. According to research of the World Health Organization, adolescents who are provided requisite information in relation to reproductive health education do not engage in sexual activity. And even if they do, they do it cautiously. Dear parents, you are our first teachers and our heroes. Please provide your girl child and your boy child the requisite information in relation to reproductive health education, taking into consideration abstinence and the use of modern day contraceptives in order to help us make informed decisions. Be our friends and help navigate us from the uncertainties of adolescents. If you ask me for a required age, I will recommend as early as six years. Children of today are resourceful and they'll get to find out anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, you will side with me that one of the best ways to help care of this menace is through social media, as the youth of today are adventurous, are we not? Thank you. I have created a website coupled with YouTube channels and Instagram accounts in order to share daily updates on reproductive health to empower both sexes. I will also serve as a point of contact between already existing institutions and the youth. Auntie Jibodi, Auntie Jane, you will side with me that the Ghana Health Service and the Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana is trying to care the menace of teenage pregnancy, while the United Nations Population Fund, through its Orange Center, and the Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit is trying to care the menace of sexual abuse. Through this website, victims of teenage pregnancy would log in and be directed to the PPAG site, of which they will be enrolled on their programs. I will in turn do a follow-up to make sure that they are empowered through this program. Victims of sexual abuse would also log in to the UNFPA and those pages, of which perpetrators of the act will be brought to book, and they in turn will be counseled to become better people in society. I will use my influence to frequently organize community games coupled with educational tours and radio interviews to educate the youth on reproductive health education. And if I cannot abstain, what do I do? Religious leaders, please do not stop propagating the gospel of abstinence. Promoting reproductive health education would mean providing that individual knowledge in relation to menstruation. It would mean protecting the rights of that orphan child. It would mean protecting that inmate from being accused of that offense. It would mean promoting mental stability in society. It would mean empowering that individual. And it would mean promoting national development. I do not stand here to claim perfection, but to seek your indulgence in order to care this menace. I choose to raise my voice not because I want to shout, but for the voice of the voiceless to be heard. And with this, I dare to say, arise, Ghana youth, for your country, for the nation demands your devotion through reproductive health education. Let us get involved, for we are the future of the country, and the country belongs to us. With this, I reaffirm my passion, my project, and my purpose in life. I can't let it there. I'm posting a zoe zoe. I'm Thank you. We're Gaga from the Upper East Region, ladies and gentlemen. Fritz, I'm coming straight to you. What do you think of Wedaga's performance? Wadaga has always been a lady of passion. She's eloquent, she's forceful, and um, she put her point across. It was a little bit too long, and um, I thought that earlier on you didn't catch on. It was when you went down on your knees that I realized that it's the Wadaga of old, the woman of passion, and you know, you go far. So well done. Thank you. 
Well done, you go far, Wedaga. Linda, I see you're nodding. What would you tell Wedaga? Wedaga, very good presentation. But you know, as a nation, sometimes I wonder what we want. Because all the facts, all you stated are facts. But I remember when they were introducing comprehensive sexuality education. Our pastors stood up. No. Imam stood up. No. So what do we want? Because this is a fact. WHO says that 21 million girls aged between 15 and 19 in developing countries become pregnant. So it is a fact. You know, so it's a tall order. You have a lot to deal with if this is the project you are backing on, but it's a super project. You seem to have your facts together. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, do it one more time for Wedaga. Daga, this is your question. And kindly listen attentively. Some people hold the view that, like any other contract, marriage should be based on time and performance. That if a partner does not fulfill his or her obligations, it should be at the discretion of the other party to renew or not when the duration expires. What is your view on this? Thank you very much for this question. First of all, what is marriage? Marriage is a union between two people who have agreed to come together and live in harmony. That leads us to our next question. Why do people get married? People get married for several reasons. Some get married for procreation. Some get married for companionship. Some even argue that they get married in order to prevent them from being promiscuous. But I think that is also a discussion for another day in the sense that promiscuity is a behavior that I believe that whether you get married or not, if you are promiscuous, that attitude will still continue. But in some context, tradition is able to control promiscuity. For instance, where I come from, if a woman gets married, there is no way she can cheat on her husband as a result of our traditions. It prevents you from flirting on your husband. Now, why should marriage be based on time and duration? What is time? Um, time and performance. Time simply means duration. Performance is ability. Why would we subject marriage to a contract? Marriage is supposed to be something between two people that have accepted to come together. Some might argue that, yes, it should be based on time and performance in the sense that as the marriage progresses, maybe a partner can change in attitude or maybe at least to abusive situations. Yes, if it is that it becomes a life-threatening venture, then I will side with people that go in line with the notion that marriage should be based on time and performance. For instance, during the time of COVID, somewhere last year, we usually woke up to the news of abusive relationships, people dying out of it, where an instance was recorded in East Legon, where a woman was beaten by her husband and ended up dying. And this type of a situation, if it is life strengthening, fine, it's great. But then if you have the notion that it should be based on time and performance, I believe it will lead to unhealthy relationship. Why do I say unhealthy one? In the sense that if I have the notion that I am going into marriage as a result of time and performance, yes, that means that as I am going, there's going to be miscommunication, number one. It's going to lead to infidelity. Infidelity is going to lead to divorce. You realize that when you go to our courts now, the rate of divorce is higher than the rates of marriages. Research even has it that it is because of the COVID that the rate of divorce in Ghana has reduced. In the sense that COVID has brought families together and they have come to terms with each other to iron out their differences. Now, another thing is that it leads to mistrust. Mistrust in the sense that time and performance, if you are subjecting marriage to time and performance, I am going to talk from a biblical point of view. I'm a Christian. And Bible says that God brings together a man and a woman for a reason. If you are saying time and performance, maybe I'm speaking from a woman's point of view. If 
it is the sense that you are saying you are going into this marriage because of a time or the ability to get something from it, it means that you should also check yourself. Am I fit for the marriage? Am I ready? You should ask yourself those questions before you then go ahead to say that it should be based on time and performance. So I do vehemently disagree with the notion that marriage should be based on time and performance since it leads to unhealthy relationship, it leads to mistrust. Thank you so much, Wadaga. Bangawego.